Recently, Burkina Faso, under the leadership of Ibrahim Traoré, announced that it is changing the country's national anthem, which was originally in French, to the Burkinabe local language. First of all, we want to say congratulations. According to the Burkinabe Ministry of National Education, the Burkinabe National Anthem has been translated into 14 local Burkinabe languages in order to strengthen patriotic sentiment and shift away from neo-colonial practices. Again, we say congratulations to Burkina Faso, but should we be surprised that Burkina Faso is taking this move? Of course not. It's no longer news that President Ibrahim Traore is a staunch anti-colonial and anti-imperialist leader who believes strongly in upholding the sovereignty of his country. In fact, we can rightly say that Captain Traore is one of the most patriotic Africans right now. His actions since he came to power in September 2022 have proven over and over again that he didn't come to dance to the tune of the West or continue on the path laid down by his predecessors. But it's not just Traore. The other military leaders in the Sahel, including General Tiani of Niger and Asimi Goita of Mali, are also changing the status quo. Since these guys came to power, they have strived to break the chains of colonialism that have held the African container for so long. Kicking out French troops and distancing their countries from the West as well as prioritizing the sovereignty of their countries have distinguished them over other African leaders who are weak and are puppets to the West. If you walk through the streets of any African country that was colonized, one thing that you will definitely find is the remnants of colonization. For Francophone Africa, it could be a street named after a French colonial ruler or a statue of one French colonial master. The official language of these countries, which is French, is even the biggest remnant of colonization. All these are all evidence that at one time these African countries were under French rule and they tried to impose their culture, ideas and language on the African people. Although Africans resented the domination by France and other Western powers, which led to the struggle for independence, which they later attained, some of the remnant colonialism, which paid tribute to the colonial masters, were left untouched. The most obvious of these are language, and let us say that it has had a profound negative impact on African civilization and development. You see, when the colonial masters landed on African shores, the first step they took to colonize Africans was to somehow convince Africans that their traditions and languages were savages. Then they began to impose and enforce their ideas and principles on the people. The only way they could successfully do this was by enforcing their language, be it French, Portuguese, or English, on the local communities. So began the spread of Western education with the aid of Christian missionaries. They built schools and encouraged Africans to learn these new ideas, not because they were interested in developing the colonies, but because they wanted to impose their ideas and make Africans learn just enough to understand their principles and ideas. If you observe, the schools even up till now don't teach Africans what is truly needed to industrialize and develop. Africans were only taught theories and never the practical knowledge on how to do things. If they actually did, independence would have occurred before 1960 because it was only after World War II when Africans were used to fight the war and they interacted with people from other countries. That was when the struggle for independence truly began. In these schools, Africans were taught and are still taught to hate their identity, language, customs, and traditions. They were taught that the white man's knowledge was supreme. This is why it was very easy to group local communities that had their own language, customs, and traditions together into a single country. While it was a good move for the colonial master, this can arguably be regarded as the origin of Africa's problem today. Think about it. Every African country in existence today has more than 10 local languages. Nigeria alone has 250 local languages, and each of these languages comes from different ethnic groups with their own beliefs, customs, and traditions. Before the colonial masters came, each of the ethnic groups was divided into kingdoms, and everybody lived by their rules. Of course, there were skirmishes and fights between these kingdoms, but that is normal. However, when the colonial masters came, 
they decided to lump all these ethnic groups with their different languages and traditions to form a single country. Now, check the root cause of violence and insecurity in most African countries. It can be traced to tribal and ethnic concerns. In Mali, the violence started in 2013 because of the Tuareg rebels, a tribe in Mali that believes they are marginalized. Today, that violence has spread to other parts of the Sahel because Islamic jihadists took advantage of the situation. In Nigeria, the political scene is not stable because the minority groups feel that only two tribes, which are the Hausas and Yorubas, have been the ones leading the country since independence. This issue of ethnicity and language has created strife and division, making the goal of African unity a dream. If Africa is to get better and have any hope of development, Africa needs to go back to its roots. Africa needs to find its identity and language. Just look at the Asian countries and even Europe. All these countries have their own languages, which is the official language spoken in that country. In Germany, the official language is German. In China, it's Mandarin. In India, it's Hindu. Yep, interesting thing. All these countries have different languages as well, just like Africa. But they have a general language that everyone speaks. It seems that it's only in the African continent that the official languages are languages imposed by the colonial masters. In African schools, it's considered wrong and a crime to speak your local language. The situation is terrible and is even worse because some of the current generation of young people do not even know how to speak their local language. Everything they know is either English, French, or Portuguese. When will Africa learn? China was very poor before World War II. But after the World War, the leaders decided to take serious measures to develop their country. Guess what? They did it without losing their identity. In Africa, the situation is not the same. Africa needs to follow the steps of China and choose one official language. This is a very necessary step to break free from colonialism. African countries are not the only countries that were colonized. India was colonized by the British, but they didn't lose their identity, language, traditions, and customs. Captain Ibrahim Traore understands this, and that is why he decided to translate the national anthem into 14 Burkinabe local languages, which will be taught in schools. The president of Mali, Asimi Goita, also took a similar step last year to remove French as the official language of the country. In Burkina Faso, a major street in the capital city of Ouagadougou, which was named after the French colonial era leader Charles de Gaulle, has been replaced with that of Thomas Sankara, a pan-Africanist, hero of Burkina Faso and beloved former president. Burkina Faso, however, is not the only African country that has endeavored to decolonize its streets. Similar moves have been made in Ivory Coast and Senegal. In Ivory Coast, former French presidents Valéry Giscard d'Estaing and François Mitterrand are no longer honored by boulevards. Instead, they have been replaced by the first Ivorian president, Félix Houpoué Boigny, and other local figures. Similarly, in Senegal last year, opposition leader Ousmane Sonko removed Charles de Gaulle's name from an avenue and renamed it Peace Street after becoming mayor of the Ziguincourt district. Other signs bearing the names of French colonial personalities were also replaced. In Tanzania, the renaming of streets in the city of Dar es Salaam has been undertaken to reflect the country's post-independence identity and honor Tanzanian leaders and historical figures. After gaining independence from British colonial rule in 1961, Tanzania embarked on a process of reclaiming its history and cultural heritage, including the renaming of streets that previously honored colonial figures. Streets that were originally named after British governors, colonial administrators, and other colonial era figures underwent a transformation to highlight the contributions and achievements of Tanzanian leaders. The renaming aimed to celebrate the nation's own heroes and emphasize its independence and self-determination. These actions taken by these leaders are necessary steps to push the continent in the right direction. However, as much as we applaud these actions, the fact is that not it is not enough. There is more that needs to be done for the African continent to shed itself from the remnants of colonization. What are your thoughts? 
Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.